glaucoma module premium edition mapping brooks membrane opening minimum rim width new world in glaucoma diagnosis no financial disclosure the three pillars of glaucoma diagnosis are function morphology and intraocular pressure this video theta focuses on morphometric assessment of the optic nerve end. it has been decoded with spectralis workflow for better initiation of glaucoma module premium edition box diagrams will be used for majority of the slides as seen on the right lower corner to reorient the anatomical locations rp is over bm bm is over choroid choroid is over the sclera framework of this video theater involves what is the true margin of the optic nerve end what is brooks membrane what is brooks membrane opening what is brooks membrane opening minimum rim width how is it different from brooks membrane opening horizontal rim width what are the alpha beta and gamma zones what is the true margin of the optic disc clinically the inner edge of the sclera elsning ring is identified as the disc margin depicted by the green line while performing ophthalmoscopy or fundus photography whereas in oct the termination of the brooks membrane known as the brooks membrane opening is identified as the disc margin depicted by the red line so now we are left with two disc margins the brooks membrane based disc margin shown in red and the clinically assessed disc margin shown in green when there are two disc margins then we will have two areas within the margins one clinical disc area two brooks membrane opening area it is well documented by amini et al that clinical disc area is way larger than the brooks membrane opening area in normal as well as in glaucomatous eyes two swords cannot be in single sheath so which is the true boundary of the disc margin since blood vessels and axons cannot pass through the brooks membrane termination of it is the true boundary putting all speculations to rest reorienting the anatomy of brooks membrane brooks membrane lies in between the retinal pigment epithelium and choroid retinal pigment epithelium lies on top of it choroid lies below it the brooks membrane has two configurations if the brooks membrane extends beyond the elsning border tissue it is called internally oblique configuration if the elsning border tissue extends beyond the brooks membrane it is called externally oblique configuration appearance of brooks membrane histology versus oct in oct the thickness of brooks membrane and rpe appear to be more or less the same but in reality that is histology thickness of brooks membrane is only 1/3 of retinal pigment epithelium thickness so why does brooks membrane thickness vary in oct it is due to the principle of oct which detects the reflectance of bounding surfaces brooks membrane consists of five layers high reflectivity of each boundary causes it to appear thicker in oct this is an electron microscopic picture of brooks membrane showing its five layers brooks membrane opening imagine the retinal nerve fiber layer projecting into the optic disc like the water falling into a waterfalls this helps in understanding the concept better with spectralis glaucoma module premium edition software there are 24 scanned lines so totally 48 bmo positions are detected along the optic nerve end to determine the bmo based disc margin the bmo based disc margin should be smooth as seen on the right side whereas on the left side the margin seem to be irregular indicating an erroneously performed test the green line is the segmentation of internal limiting membrane the red line segments the brooks membrane with the brooks membrane opening depicted as a red dot the 360 degree scan of the optic nerve end with bmo is shown on the left side how to find the brooks membrane opening in oct first detect the green wedge shaped ending of the choroid bmo will be seen to lie just adjacent to it brooks membrane never ends before the chorio capillaries ending whether it is an internal oblique or external oblique configuration but brooks membrane can extend further than chorio capillaries in a real time scenario the ending of the choroid is shown in green and the minimum rim width is shown by the blue arrow let us see a 3d animation of brooks membrane opening minimum rim width once the internal limiting membrane brooks membrane and brooks membrane opening are segmented this three dimensional angle beautifully reveals the brooks membrane opening minimum rim width brooks membrane opening minimum rim width is the smallest distance between the brooks membrane opening and the internal limiting membrane 
The Brooks membrane opening minimum rim width follows the ISNT rule. It is thicker in the inferior and superior quadrants. But every decision for something is a decision against something else as revealed in Dark, seen in Netflix. Let us see why minimum rim width was chosen over horizontal rim width. Chow and et al. revealed that BMO minimum rim width yielded higher diagnostic performance than BMO horizontal rim width. Also, sensitivity of the BMO minimum rim width was consistently higher than RNFL and BMO horizontal rim width. A study done on glaucomatous neuroretinal rim tissue revealed that the mean deviation of the visual fields correlated better with BMO MRW than with BMO HRW. Also, the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness correlated better with BMO MRW than with BMO HRW. The curse of the optic nerve head is its variability as many different sizes are available. The size of the optic disc influences the neuroretinal rim size. Imagine a large disc and a small disc having same neuroretinal rim area. Large disc will still have a small BMO MRW and small disc will still have a large BMO MRW. The influence of the disc size on BMO MRW should be kept in mind while interpretation. As we have seen before, different persons will have different optic nerve heads. Categorizing the optic nerve head may be challenging. Ideally, the BMO margin matches the clinical disc margin. So, there will be no hyperreflectance surrounding the optic nerve head in OCT. In challenging situations, when BMO margin does not match with the clinical disc margin, hyperreflectance occurs surrounding the optic nerve head. Example, peripapillary atrophy, conus temporalis, PPA with conus temporalis. The alpha zone is where BM and RPE are present. Beta zone is where only BM is present. Gamma zone is where no BM and no RPE are present. In peripapillary atrophy, RPE ends before the BM producing hyperreflectance. In conus temporalis, RPE, BM and choroid end together before the sclera producing hyperreflectance. In PPA with conus temporalis, Brooks membrane ends in between the RPE ending and scleral ending producing hyperreflectance. With spectralis, there is a dual beam scanner to detect minute eye movement during performance. Also with GMPE, same piece of tissue is examined during follow-up, which is very important to detect glaucomatous progression. With the anatomic positioning system, first the foveal centration is marked, then the BMO centration is marked, then fovea BMO axis is plotted, followed by the 24 line scan examining 48 BMO positions, followed by a circular scan examining the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness and finally we have the examination of ganglion cell layer. This video shows the single beam system on the left side. The scan done with a single beam does not compensate for eye movement. Whereas on the right side video with the dual beam spectralis, the eye movements are compensated for with the help of reference scan. Thus with spectralis dual beam live tracking, the same piece of tissue is examined during glaucoma follow-up. Anatomic positioning system technology can pick up glaucomatous progression at the level of 1 to 2 micron difference between two visits with live tracking. 16 circular scans are being done every second and every circle has to match with the optic nerve head thus automatically correcting if there is eye movement. Without APS, the patient's superior temporal quadrant of ONH appears normal in normal head position seen on left side and appears thinned if head is tilted as seen on right side. Fovea is below the BMO center on the left and above the BMO center on the right. But with APS technology, fovea BMO axis is plotted thus compensating for head tilt and cyclotorsion. This is the same example now applied with APS technology. Head tilt or no head tilt, superior temporal quadrant remains same. Impact of fovea BMO axis, example 1, plus 6, where fovea is above BMO center, example 2, minus 17, where fovea is below the BMO center. If the fovea BMO axis is not plotted and the ONH quadrants are divided, then it is a wrongly interpreted result. Whereas, if there is a positive fovea BMO axis, the ONS template is categorized after a clockwise rotation. For a negative fovea BMO axis, the ONS template is categorized after anti-clockwise rotation for correct interpretation. GMP is a promising glaucoma toolkit, which helps in serving the glaucoma patient better. Thank you.